Hello YouTube viewers, this is another video in what is proved to be quite a long line of vacuum videos for your pleasure, amusement and titivation if you're that way inclined, as I know some of you are. Some of you would probably like me to dress up in high heels and trample on some various items and then vacuum them up and I don't know. but. Anyway, this is for people interested in vacuum cleaners and not in a perverse sexual manner, but just because they kind of like them, don't really know why. But um, anyway, enough of that. Uh, excuse me, Rupert, you're not the star of this show. The Hoover Discovery Amigo is. So if you care to move your little boy bottom out the way. Little boy bottom, oh, that's a bit rude. Anyway, this... Back to the matter in hand. This is the Hoover Discovery Amigo. And the model, if I can look on the box, is T6074. This I got from eBay uh, two or three years ago. And it's actually a model designed or destined for the European market. I'm not sure where it was made. It's either the UK or the EC. If it was made in the EC, it's probably the Hoover factory in Portugal, which I expect no longer produces vacuum cleaners since most of them come from China now. But on the box here, it does say Best of British, uh, by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, manufacturers of vacuum cleaners and laundry equipment, Hoover Limited, Merthyr Tidfil. Now, um, Hoover vacuums used to have that uh, royal seal, stamp of approval on them, but I believe it was after the free flights fiasco that the Queen revoked her approvement. Uh, uh, approvement? Is that the right word? Appointment. So now current models don't have that. So here we are, the Discovery. Um, it didn't last very long. They did this model, they did a bagless version, and then the later version to come out from China was the Octopus which is basically the same body shape. It was bagless, but it had a, a zoom extension tube um, and remote control. So here we have the machine itself, quite um, a chunky, bulky fat cleaner, but quite robust one. With it, you've got the standard carpet and floor nozzle. It's all plastic. Then you've got this Turbo Vario two-in-one nozzle, which is quite a good um, turbo nozzle I find and it's got an adjustable foot here so it means whatever angle the head's at it should remain in contact with the floor. You also get this little hinge device which I'll show you what that's for later. You get three separate small cleaning tools which is a far better idea than these multi-tools that you get on many cleaners now, these two-in-one or three-in-one uh, tools I don't like. You get quite a short crevice tool, um, a very good upholstery and stair nozzle. I, I really like that design and it works well. And a little dusting brush. Now they actually fit on the pipes with the old Hoover pip fitting. Any of you familiar with classic Hoovers will recognize that fitting. But in this case, it fits on. It goes into that groove and you twist it to keep it secure. So if the little pip thing breaks off, I don't know how secure that would be. And they even they did break off on the vintage cleaners occasionally. Um, sometimes. So you get the telescopic extension tube. There's another part of the tube separate. Um, they are metal, I think a lightweight aluminium. And you get the tool caddy here, which stores the three cleaning tools. Onto the machine itself, I'll just take the hose off. And on, on the model, on here, on the hand grip, there's no manual suction control. You have to rely on the control on the body of the machine. Let's move all these tools out of the way and show you the cleaner itself. As I say, it's quite quite a, um, a fat, 
bulky looking cleaner, but it's it seems very robust. I like the the Hoover branding there on the wheels, and of course the famous Hoover roundel. Now this model, as I say, is the Amigo, which we would say is the Pets model, and to make it Pets, obviously it has the turbo vario nozzle and has a char charcoal carbon filter which is supposed to reduce any odours. It has a zero contact system for the dust bag, so you just lift the bag out here. Like that, the bag comes out. You don't actually hold the bag, and then basically you just go like that, tip the bag into the bin. In the bag compartment we have the carbon filter there. And at the back, a washable micro filter. So here we have the washable filter. I think you could upgrade with a HEPA if you wanted to. So basically it's just a sponge sponge filter and then that's so uh, they're both washable. And then just pop pop it back in if I can. That also helps to keep the noise level down. The motor's in here, but it's all all sealed in, so it's double insulation for the motor. So it is relatively quiet. There's another filter on the top of the grill there. That just clicks in. Have basic controls: foot-operated on-off switch, uh, foot-operated automatic cord rewind, and here, what does it say on it? I can't really see in this light. It probably says uh, it says. Oh. Does it just say check on it? I think it just says check. So I'm not. Uh, there we are. Check, check. That'll be for the bag or uh, the filter, I believe. I've never seen it light up actually, even with the hose end block. The bag is absolutely tiny on the Discovery. I mean, it's quite a big looking cleaner with a tiny, tiny bag. So uh, that's a bit disappointing. I wonder if you can put that on. No, see there's a fail safe. You cannot put the bag door back unless the bag is in place. It's a pretty standard feature. So I'll just get the bag popped into place. Let's try do it now. Oops, some muck's fallen out. And Let's see, it goes in this way. That's it, I believe. Yep, and it goes in like that. And then you've got to locate the collar. That's it, quite difficult with one hand, but managed it. So here we have the back of the machine. It's a pretty standard setup. You've got the two large rear wheels, a swivel cast at the front. There's a parking bracket at the back there for your tube. And there's also one on here. And I believe actually, yes, I'll, I'll do that in the demonstration, but to me it looks like there is an on-off switch, which is, or possibly not, I'm not sure. Some of these versions of Discovery did turn off when you put the um, parking Right, like if you were to slot the nozzle in, you see, like this. Sometimes, some some would turn off. I know I have a, a Miele cleaner that does that. But there's that. Now because it was for the European market, it didn't have a UK plug on. But I've got this very nifty little adapter I found on eBay that basically turns the two pin plug you get fitted in with European appliances into a three pin and the the hole is big enough really to allow you to, to put that away fairly neatly so it doesn't really stick out and the flex on the Amigo is quite long can't say how long it is offhand but it is quite a good length but it, look how thin it is and Hoover did use this thin flex, um, I remember on the Alpina, which I have there. It uses the same thin flex. This enabled them to incorporate more flex 
onto the flex through wine, but whether, I don't know whether it could stand up to carrying such high wattages. This is 1700 watts, but it's got quite a good smooth action. Nice carry handle. It's quite a hefty, heavy machine. If we look there, we can see the model number T6074, and actually made in the EC. And uh, the maximum wattage is 1700 watts, varies from 1300 up to 1700. Of course, it uses less the power when you have it in the lower setting. So that's the Discovery Amigo. Enough chit chat. We'll put it all together and I'll give you a quick demo. Right, here we are. I've uh, got a bit of visual dirt on the carpet taken from a dust bag. Um, I haven't got uh, money to waste throwing rice and, and coffee and flour and everything down. So that's real dirt that's already been picked up by another cleaner. And we're going to give the Hoover Discovery Amigo uh, a little test on this, but we're just using the standard floor nozzle and we're going to select full power. So turn it on. And as you can hear, it's started on slow power. It's quite quiet, but we're going to do it on full power. So there you go, I think you'll agree that it's done a pretty good job and it's done it quite quietly as well. And that's just with the plain suction. I'll demonstrate the turbo head. I'll just show you this little gizmo that Hoover have on their machine. I've just realised I've got the telescopic tube on the lowest part. I think you'd have to be eight foot to... Let's just pull it out. Wow! Now, if you're very, very tall, that is the cleaner for you. It's because of the extra little bit you get here at the end, I think. It really makes it longer. We don't need that much. Anyway, this little hinge is quite ingenious. I believe there's other cleaners that have had this sort of hinge before. But you just turn it, rotate the hinge. And now... You've got the handle in the regular position, but that's ideal for going underneath your furniture, underneath your bed, so you're not bending down, you're not scrambling about on the floor. So that's quite an ingenious little device. I haven't seen that on any recent Hoovers. As you can see, there's the tool caddy there with the three small tools on. So we'll just do a quick demo of the turbo nozzle. And that will be it for your introductory to the Hoover Discovery. Right, so I've fitted the Turbo Vario nozzle onto the machine. It has an adjustment at the back, an air inlet, which is similar to the, there's an air inlet on the top of the Miele uh, turbo head. This is just at the back. I found if you have it closed, it hardly rotates at all. So normally have it in the open position. Now, in order to demonstrate this, I was going to use rice, actually, despite what I said, but the cupboard was bare, so I found some bulgur wheat. I don't know if you can see it. This is Waitrose organic bulgur wheat, but any bulgur wheat will, wheat will do, um, whether you are like the Aldi or the Lidl or the Netto. Oh, sorry, Netto don't exist, though. The Asda bought them up. But anyway, I don't know if it's very clear to see, but you can just see there, there are some particles of rice-like material, which is representing grit, but it's not really 
not really into the pile, but anyway, it's just just to see if it picks up. I'll be I'll be um, surprised if it doesn't, but I've never tried it. So we'll we'll try for a glamour low shot, and we'll just see how the turbo nozzle picks all this mess up. Because obviously you would spill bulgur wheat on the carpet quite regularly, so this is a good test for it. Well, there you have it. No surprise, it's picked up all the dirt. So, all in all, a pretty decent vacuum cleaner from Hoover, which is something, unfortunately, you can't really say these days. And quite a rare model now, the Discovery. And as I say, this was not a model for the UK market, it was for the European market, so quite rare in the UK. So that's it for the Hoover Discovery. I'll be back on YouTube. Keep checking out my channel for more videos. There'll be more vintage TV ads and more videos of yours truly, both current and vintage. And uh, coming up, we will have videos on the Hoover Alpina, the Telios, and that tiny little one at the end, the microspace. So for now, it's goodbye and good night. <laughs>